video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It is not a fun one. It says five circles in a square. The total red area is 24. What is the total orange area? This took me a lot more work than I wanted it to, and I'll share with you my journey. And if you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. So I'm pretty sure the way to solve this thing is we wanna look at this triangle right here and the similar triangle right here. One will have an inscribed red circle and one will have an inscribed orange circle. So if we can find the ratio of the areas of the triangles, we can find the ratio of the areas of the circles. And then since we know that the area of each of the red circles is equal to 12, we can figure out the area of each of the orange circles. So first we gotta figure out the size of this angle theta. The first thing I tried, I got rid of the two red circles. And then since this is a square and the three circles fit this way, they should also fit this way. So that would look something like this. And these two lines would be perpendicular to each other. And let's find the center of this circle and then extend the line parallel to these lines. And then it looks like we can repeat that all the way around and it goes through all of these centers. So then this is really cool. If this is theta, we know this angle down here is also theta. If we look at these two parallels and treat the base as a transversal, these are called corresponding angles. And they have the same measure, so they're both theta. So let's look at this green right triangle. The height of the triangle is the radius of this orange circle, so let's call it little r. And then this portion of the hypotenuse is also a radius of the orange circle, so we can call that little r. And then this last piece of the hypotenuse is also little r, and that's because it's the same size as this piece right here. So this is little r, this will also be little r. And now let's get rid of all the other stuff and focus on this green triangle. On the hypotenuse, this r and this r would give us 2r. And now we have the hypotenuse is twice as large as the shortest side. That is always true in a 30-60-90 triangle. Here's the notes right here. In any right triangle where the hypotenuse is double the shortest side, it has to be a 30-60-90 triangle. So this angle theta is gonna be 30 degrees. So I was pretty excited about finding this 30 degrees, but then I realized I don't know for sure that this through the center would go through the centers of the other orange circles. I could not find a way to prove that. So this very well could have been 29 degrees or even 25 degrees, or it could have been 35 degrees. I know it looks like 30 degrees and I feel like this is true, but I couldn't prove it. There's probably a way to prove that geometrically, but I couldn't think of it. If you can think of a way to prove that, please share in the comments, I'd love to know. So for now, I'm gonna put a question mark next to the 30 degrees and put a box around it. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. Now I'll show you another approach. Let's mark the point that's the intersection of this line and this side. Now let's make a circle with a radius of this right here. And then if we bring this over here and mark this point, and then with this corner as the center, let's draw another circle of the same size right here. And then let's focus on this triangle right here. This height is the radius of this big circle, so let's call it big R. And then this piece of the hypotenuse is also a radius of this circle, so let's call it big R. And then this remaining piece of the hypotenuse is a radius of this circle, and these two circles are the same size, so this is also R. So now we have another situation where the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shortest side. But once again, I couldn't figure out a way to prove that this wasn't just really close. Prove that these intersect right in the middle. So it could look this way if it was, say, 29 degrees or 28 degrees. So unfortunately, I had to give up on this idea too. So now let's try some algebra. Let's mark this angle as theta, and let's move this up here, and let's get rid of this. So I wanna see if I can find another way to verify that the theta is equal to 30 degrees. This given figure is a square, which means that the length of the bottom needs to equal the length of the side. So let's try to find some equation for the bottom and for the side. Let's find the center of this circle and the center of this circle, and then connect the segment. Through this center, let's draw the horizontal line, and through this center, let's draw the vertical line. And let's complete this right triangle. So now we gotta add some variables. Let's call the orange radius little r. And that means this whole side length is gonna be made up of one, two, three, four little r's. And then let's focus on this triangle. This angle on this triangle is the same angle as this right here that will also be theta. And that's because this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this. And let's call the bottom of this triangle x. We can make an equation with this using some trigonometry. Here's the notes for trigonometry. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. So for this one, we're gonna say the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent, which is this x, over the hypotenuse, which is this 4r. And I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of this denominator. We can multiply both sides by 4r. On the right-hand side, these 4r's are gonna divide each other out. And that'll leave us with x is equal to 4r cosine theta. So we can change this x right here into 4r cosine theta. 
So now we got part of the bottom done. We just got to deal with these two pieces. Well, this piece right here is the radius of the orange circle. So it's going to be little r. And then this piece is also a radius of an orange circle. You can see it right up here. So we can also call it little r. And now we have an equation for the bottom. We have an r and an r, which will give us 2r, and then plus the 4r cosine theta. So that's exciting. We got an equation for the bottom of our large square. Now let's focus on the side. So first we can do this large piece right here. Let's call it y. And then we can bring back our trig notes and we can write this as sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 4r. And then to get rid of the denominator, we can multiply both sides by 4r. This 4r and this 4r will divide each other out and we end up with y is equal to 4r sine theta. So let's update this y to be 4r sine theta. So now we have this portion, we need to figure out these two portions. So let's go back over here, bring this back, and let's extend this hypotenuse down here. And then let's complete this right triangle. The very tiny angle right there will also be theta. These are called vertical angles. This angle will equal that angle. And if we make this side z, we can now make another trigonometric equation. This time we're gonna use tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is the z and the adjacent would be the r. So we have tangent theta is equal to z over r. And then we can multiply both sides by r and that'll give us z equals r tan theta. So we can make this z r tan theta. And then the exact same thing would happen up here. So now we've gotten all the way from here to here. We just gotta do this piece here and this piece down here. From this point, let's draw the perpendicular and let's make this right triangle right there. And this angle would also be theta. And if it's not obvious why, let's make this angle A right in the middle here. And let's change this to question mark. We know that theta plus A is 90 degrees. And we have another 90 degrees right here. So A plus question mark is 90 degrees. Well, that's only going to be true if the question mark is theta. So that makes this angle theta. And then this side is a radius of the orange circle. So we can call it little r. And then let's call the hypotenuse W. So we can use another trig function, cosine. It says cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent is the r and the hypotenuse is the w. And then to get rid of the w in the denominator, we can multiply both sides of the equation by w. These will divide each other out and we end up with r equals w cosine theta. And then we don't want r, we want w, so let's divide both sides by cosine theta. These will divide each other out, so then we end up with w equals r over cosine theta. So we can change this w into r over cosine theta. But now we got to prove that this is equal to that piece. So let's change that back to W, draw this here and color it red. And let's draw this piece right here. And then let's color this top piece and this piece blue. So these two red segments are parallel and these two blue segments are parallel. That means this is a parallelogram and opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. So this red length is also W, which means that it's also R over cosine theta. And then the exact same thing can happen down here. So this will also be R over cosine theta. And then this is equal to this, so we can bring these over here. So now we have an equation for the side. So it'll be 2r over cosine theta plus 2r tangent theta plus 4r sine theta. So now we have an equation for the bottom equals the side. So this looks like a great place for an intermission. Let's take a break. All right, the intermission is over. It's actually been two hours for me. I had to meet with two students. Let's shift everything down here and let's mess around with this. So we have our bottom expression is equal to our side expression. I'm noticing that every single term has a 2r in it. So let's copy it down and divide everything by 2r. For the first term, 2r over 2r changes into 1. And then for this term, the 2r's will divide each other out, and 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. For this one, the 2r on top will divide with the 2r on bottom. It's just going to change into 1. And then here, the 2r's will divide each other away. And then for the last term, the 4r over 2r will just change into 2. And now we could smush everything together. Next, looking at this, we have cosine, cosine, and sine. And we have a tangent. Tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So let's rewrite this tangent as sine over cosine. And now we have everything in terms of sine and cosine. For the next step, let's get rid of these fractions. And we can do that by multiplying both sides by cosine theta. This cosine theta will distribute to both of these terms. Cosine theta times 1 is cosine theta, and cosine theta times 2 cosine theta is 2 cosine squared theta. On the right-hand side, cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta is 1, and then cosine theta times sine theta over cosine theta is sine theta. And last, cosine theta times 2 sine theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. So we could simplify this a little bit more. I bet you there's some double angles we could simplify too. There might be some other stuff, but we don't really need to for this problem. All I was doing was checking the validity of theta equals 30 degrees. So we're gonna try out theta equals 30 degrees. 
So in the place of all these thetas, I'm going to plug in 30 degrees. And now we just need to evaluate these things. To do this, we can bring back our 30, 60, 90 triangle. And for the angle 30, the opposite is this side, the adjacent is this side, and the hypotenuse is this side. So the sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. For sine, the opposite of the 30 is the n, and the hypotenuse is 2n, and that'll simplify to 1 half. And then for the cosine, the adjacent is root 3n, and the hypotenuse is 2n, and that'll simplify to root 3 over 2. So now we have our values for sine 30 and cosine 30. So in the place of all the sine 30s, we can plug in 1 half. And in the place of the cosine 30s, we can plug in root 3 over 2. And then let's copy down everything else. Let's smush everything together and simplify this. This first term is already simplified. For this second term, the square can go to the top and the bottom. So it's going to look like this. And then this square and this square root are going to cancel each other out. And this 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2. And then this 2 and this 2 on bottom will divide each other away. So this all simplified into 3 over 2. And then since these two have a common denominator, we can express them as a single fraction. It'll be 3 plus root 3 over 2. So on the right-hand side, the first two terms look fine. For the third term, this 2 and this 2 on bottom can divide each other away. And this 1 is being multiplied by this, so it's not doing anything. It can go away. And same thing for these parentheses. They're not doing anything either. And now we have three terms. Let's give them a common denominator. We can change this 1 into a 2 over 2. Now they all have the same denominator, so we can make them a single fraction. And 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So now both sides of our equation are equal to 3 plus root 3 over 2, so it checks out. So we now know that theta does equal 30 degrees, and we did all of this work to verify it. But now we're out of room, so let's get rid of the work. And let's update this theta to 30. That was a lot of work, but we know it's 30 degrees. So now let's look at this square. Let's give the base a length of s and the height a length of s. Next, if we look at this corner, we know this is a right angle because it's a square. And since this angle is 30 degrees, this remaining angle will be 60 degrees. And now we're ready to look at our similar triangles. Let's break this one away. And then for this one, let's get rid of the red circle. And then from the tangent point between these two circles, let's draw the tangent line. And then this tangent line is perpendicular to this tangent line, so we'll make that 90 degrees. And now we can focus on this triangle. This angle is 60 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees, that means the last angle is 30 degrees. These two triangles are both 30, 60, 90 triangles. Let's move this triangle down here and match the orientation. So they're both 30, 60, 90 triangles, but for this one, it's the medium side that's equal to S, and for this one, it's the hypotenuse that's equal to S. I'm thinking we should compare the bases, so let's use the 30, 60, 90 triangle notes and find out how long is this base in terms of S. Since the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shortest side, the shortest side is going to be 1 half S. To get from the shortest side to the medium side, you multiply by square root of 3. And 1 half S times the square root of 3 is square root of 3 over 2 S. Now we have two similar triangles with inscribed circles. The scale factor of this triangle to this triangle is root 3 over 2s over s. And then if we square both these terms, we'll get the ratio of the areas. So now let's clean up this proportion. On top, the square can go to all three of these terms, and on bottom, it would just go to the s. It'll look like this. And then the square root and the square will cancel each other out. 2 squared is equal to 4, and this s squared and this s squared can divide each other away. So we're left with 3 fourths is equal to 1 orange area over 1 red area. And we were given the total red area is 24. That means these two add to 24. So each one is going to be equal to 12. So now we're really close to finding the area of one of these orange circles. Let's multiply both sides by 12. 12 times 3 over 4 is going to give us 36 over 4. And these two 12s will divide each other away to give us one orange area. And we can simplify 36 over 4 is equal to 9. So we know that one of the orange circles has an area of 9. So the total orange area is going to be 9 times 3, which is 27. Let's give it a label of units squared and put a box around it. This is the answer to our question. The total orange area is 27 units squared. This took a lot more work than I was expecting, but I still think it's a brilliant problem. Speaking of brilliant, let's talk about brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And all of them are interactive, which is the most effective way to learn. A lot of people ask me how to get better at solving math problems and puzzles. I think the best advice is practicing every single day. But how are you going to find material to practice with? Brilliant has so much great content that you'll have plenty to practice on a daily basis. Every single step I took in this video is covered in courses on Brilliant. They have tons of courses specifically in geometry, trigonometry, and algebra. 
And with enough practice, all the skills used in this video will just come naturally. If you want to check these out or any other course on Brilliant.org, they have a free 30-day trial. You can visit Brilliant.org slash AndyMath or click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. How exciting.